What's up everybody, this is Cheese Mr. Poof and welcome you back to Tamil Tuesday, your weekly dose of Elder Scrolls Legends gameplay on the Cheesy Mr. Poof channel and without further ado, let's check out the deck that we will be playing today. And the deck we will be playing today is the Budget Red Crusader. Now, the reason I'm doing another budget deck is I like it a lot because it feels like I'm giving back to the community. I mean, this is a fairly simple deck deck that probably is out there on Legends decks or something like that. But I built this from scratch just now, and I tried to make it as beginner-friendly as possible by only adding in commons and rares, as you can see here. And yeah, so this is a mostly mono-red, or mono-strength, however you want to call it, aggro deck. And we're only splashing in some willpower for the East March Crusader, because it's a creature that also fills our hand a little bit, which is going to be very useful because this is a very aggressive deck. And Crusader's Assault, which is also a red card, so it does count towards Mighty Ally. So the only time your Mighty Ally is whiffing in this deck is if the top card of your library is the East March Crusader. Also, I said library instead of deck. And that's a Magic the Gathering thing. So anyway, let's keep going. So yeah, we only have commons and rares in this deck, so it's fairly easy to craft. And yeah, let's go over some of the stuff we have. We Our one drop slot is with the Fiery Imp and Sharpshooter Scout. We got some Prophecy over here, and some snowball -y damage over here. I definitely like the combination of Fiery Imp, then Circle Initiate, and you're almost there. You're almost in the beast form, and that's going to be very good. We're also running the legs of Orc Clan Captain, which is... Very good for the cavalcade of charged creatures we are running, like the Stormcloak Vanguard, Balrage Orc, Candleheart Brawler, Rampaging Minotaur, and Battlefield Scrounger. And yeah, <laughs> well those are the charged creatures all the way. And then we are running some non-creature spells in here, like Crusader's Assault, as you can see. We buff our creature, we get the breakthrough, and we get the draw some cards. Drawing cards is very useful in an aggro deck. You might even consider modifying the list if you want to have less 1-drops. You could take out, like, per se, a sharpshooter or a imp, or an imp, and add another Crusader's Assault if you feel like you need that card draw and damage push. But yeah, it's all up to you. And we also have some other good prophecies in here, like more cool gatekeepers, which is a guard that protects our weaker creatures and buffs them, which is very good. But yeah, uh, prophecy count for the deck is 11. And that concludes the Sharpshooter Scouts, Circle Initiates, Cast Outs, more cool gatekeepers, and I think that's it. Uh, that is it. <laughs> so yeah. We have some prophecies, not too heavy, but we don't need to because we have all these charged creatures that are going to be charging at the enemy face, and we have cards like Northwind Outpost and Captain to buff them up. So yeah, it's a pretty straightforward deck, but before we sail into the ladder, let's take a look at some things you can upgrade. Okay, so I built this budget deck. Uh, in the sense that you don't have Dark Brotherhood or Clockwork City or any of the promotional sets. So let's take a look at the cards you can put in here if you have those sets. Protector of the Innocent is a completely fine thing to put in here. It's a 3-2 two for 2, it has Prophecy and Guard, so it's going to be adding to your Prophecy count, so you could be replacing Stormcloak Vanguard, honestly, in my opinion. Or maybe just some sharpshooter scouts, because these things will not be performing that well once you head higher on the ladder. Anyway, and a big change you're definitely going to want to make is take out the battlefield scroungers and put in the underworld vigilantes, because 4 damage is more than 3, and that's going to be very useful. Uh, no rage in this deck. Uh, you could put in Garnag. Maybe take out a Minotaur, put in a Garnak if you really feel like you don't need to, though. Garnak is not something that is, like, vital to this deck. Um, again, Black Dragon, you could take out the other Rampaging Minotaur and put that in. It would be adding to the Willpower. 
so I don't recommend you do that if you want to be hitting your mighty ally all the time, but it's not that big of a deal. It's just four instead of three. So yeah, those are the Dark Brotherhood ones. We're not going to be adding any neutrals. And Clockwork City, what does that give us? Right off the bat, nothing screams out here. I mean, you might think that way Prospector is good when you buff it with Scimitars and Assault. Maybe, maybe a more cool buff. But no, it's not. It's not that good. If you want to be adding more items in the future, I mean, you can branch out with this deck and make it a little bit different. You could put in Relic Hunter if you have Clockwork City. And Aldora the Daring is a 3-3 three, three for 3, which will give you the next turn a 1-1. One, one. So technically, I recommend you can put this card in your deck. Probably take out a cast out for it, maybe. Adding to the creatures. Seems fine. So yeah, it will give you the sky wag the next time you draw a card because creature, item, support, action, you're gonna hit one of those. And probably nothing you want to put in here. Petlax Exemplar is a bonkers good card, but we're capping at 5 already and we're going to be charging. So probably don't want to put that in. Clockwork Apostle again, great card, but too expensive for what we're doing. We're very low to the ground. We want to be hitting the face and we want to be hitting it fast. And then promotional. Anything we can put in here. Uh, these two are from the promotional sets. They don't really have a place in this deck, so I wouldn't say you put them in. And same goes for these. They really don't have a spot in this kind of deck. And then we just go into a monthly reward card. Obviously, Ulfric's House Carl, you want to be putting that card in if you want to craft those things. But yeah, it's a fairly straightforward deck. Let's see how it does on the rank ladder. Okay, we have an opponent and it's the Sidebutt. Here are the people playing the Battle Mage. So right off the bat, just gonna say it right here. If it's Prophecy Battle Mage, we are in a huge disadvantage. But this deck really doesn't have a way to play a control game, so we're just going to have to go all in and see if we can race. Careful there, friend. Could still be anything. Cast out is fine, rather get that as a prophecy though, but you can't win every time. We're off to an aggressive start. Close ranks. Let nothing More cool is pretty fine there. Your blood will spill. Ooh, circle initiate. I, am ready I guess that's cool. We can actually trigger the beast form if we do the cast out. You know what? I think... This could be the play. And we don't hit a prophecy, which is pretty great. So yeah, race is off to a good start because we do hit the prophecy on the first rune break. So that's a huge advantage for us. Next time we have a candle heart if we want to take out another more cool without the buff. Even with the buff though. Okay, it's okay. Wow, he's piling on. Gotta be really careful here now. I could also just get a trade here, put the candle heart here for some trades. Block out six damage from my face. The other option is I go Northwind Steel Scimitar here and start Super Race. Or maybe a Mighty Ally and a Scimitar. Mighty Ally Scimitar actually sounds like the better racing option there. Okay, if this is a Prophecy Battle Mage, we've been dodging like hell here. And we do get the trigger, so we do have a 4-1, a 6-3 Breakthrough, and a 5-3 on the right there. He only has a 6-1 with Ward. Like it's fine, we, we can Candle Heart that. Like Two, though. He has two. 
Breakthrough is pretty good. Okay, we can't play two things this turn that much is true. Okay, and we're getting really low as well. So I think we have to be really careful at this point. I might just have to do some humble trades. I feel like humble trades might be the thing here. So yeah. Here comes, and we hit a prophecy. If it's a bolt, it goes face. That's not a bolt. Okay, he keeps piling on the damage over there, so... Okay, do we have... That's eight, and that's real scary, so... I'll even let you swing first. We're gonna do this. This is not a favorable matchup, I keep saying that. But it's so true, it hurts. So unless he can remove this... Let's heat things up. Okay, that's fine. No guards here, and we can just Minotaur. Minotaur is not the best play, because we don't do anything else that turn, but... It's something we have to do to not die. So yeah. A prophecy would be awesome right about now. So this is one reason why I don't like Northwind Outposts after the nerfs, because... There's a possibility that it's just going to sit there and do nothing. And that's going to hurt. Okay, we need to top deck guard or... Well, that doesn't do it. Uh, we can still draw a guard with this. I think that's our best bet, right? We'll hold, no matter what. Or cast out, that also works. Fiery Imp. And go. We're still dead to double bolt. Okay. I think we're dead to that too. We have five. That's such an awkward number. Do we have to roll again? Because he has lethal on board, so yeah, we have to roll. Uh, that doesn't really do it. Oh, we're gonna swing the face and say, well played. So this seemed to be more of a mid-range deck, because I saw the Sentinel Battle Maze, and I saw the Cradle Crush. So, yeah. Almost won the race? Almost? Okay, we have another opponent. <laughs> And this time around, it is the Maga Shimbla, playing the Assassin, Jack of Trades. I do enjoy my more cools, so I'm going to risk it like a biscuit and keep the more cool. Scimitar is also pretty good. To your house. That's a very nicely synchronized hello there. <laughs> oh no, it's the... Okay, this is a Factotum deck. It could be the Factotum deck that Snaximan used in that one gauntlet. We stand united. That thing did perform quite well. So we're just playing this as two drop now. Oh no. That's lethal, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, then. So if we use more cool buff here, we do get to push for extra damage. But then this will kill the more cool and it will stay alive.
Is that such a bad thing? I think I'd rather have the 4-2. Yeah, I kind of like that. Close ranks. Let nothing through. Come at me. Let's just go ham. What I could have also done is play Morkul on the left. Give the buff here and make him do the trade. Which would have been the better play. I actually admit that that would have been the better play there. But it's a good thing that you notice your misplays. I think it's safe to play it on the left, right? Oh wait, does it play the shadow shifts? I think it plays shadow shifts. So yeah, let's not do that. And I'm saving the scimitars for burst damage with cards like Battlefield Scrounger and whatnot. So it's a hard pass. Okay. That's kind of scary. Because I know what cards you can play with this. And that's another scimitar, I think. Nah, we're just gonna save it. Let's break. And draw. Sharpshooter is pretty good. Pass it up. So now if he plays Shackle, everything, everything dies. Which is not ideal for me, but... Okay, he kills the 4-3. Actually, pretty good. And he kills the 4-2. That is a lot of value you're getting from that. All right. Wow. So I have a few plays here. I can go captain here and a storm cloak. Kill this. Play an imp and a sharpshooter scout. It's not a bad play. I think that's what we're doing. We stand united. The Nords must take back Skyrim. Or I could play Imp with a Scimitar, but then again, Scimitar is better for the burst. Shall fly true. Let's play one scimitar. Just to divide up the damage a little bit. No imp this time. We're trying to go all in on the left. But yeah, this thing is quite scary. And he does have that, so he's going to get to kill another thing. I'm getting dangerously close to death. But I think it's okay if we do a scrounger, double scimitar, kill this, get an item. Because we're getting forced really hard here. I'm gonna have to deal with this drain though, but this is more of a threat right now. Let's see your fighting stance. Let's make there we go. Oh. Assassin's bow is pretty good. So yeah, I think this deck design is actually really cool using the cavalcade of shackle cards like Sanctuary, Mace, with the Dress Tormentor, which is actually one of my favorite cards in the game. What have they been keeping safe for also, Ruthless one? Freebooter is in here. 
And that's an assembled conduit. Getting breakthrough. Oh yeah, I'm at the 11, so yeah, you want to be pressuring me as much as you can. Rampaging Minotaur is pretty good. So, I have to kill this. So let's throw a Minotaur under the bus and then look at our options. I can hit the face, play a Stormcloak Battalion. I can equip an Assassin's Bow, hit the face, play a Fiery Imp. I think that might be the best play. He doesn't have lethal right now. Although lightning bolt does get me kinda get me there. But let's make the ancestors Let's make the ancestors proud, shall we? Hit for ten. Is it a bolt? It looks like a bolt. It's definitely a bolt, isn't it? Oh Matt, it's gonna hurt. Oh, it's going for my face? Oh, it's going for my face. Close ranks. Let nothing through. Well, we're gonna close ranks. We can block off two damage. Nicely done. Wait, does he? Does he have this lethal? One is ready for a fight. That's lethal. So he breaks through. It's two damage. He's off by one. Unless he has the bolt. Or Ancano. He could have many things here. He shackles that. He shackles the other one. This one takes what he wants. Leaving us with one. Wait, are we one off? No. No, we're not. Right? Because we go like this. We hit for four. I'm ready for and we hit for three. Amazing. <laughs> that was clutch. That was really, really clutch. Okay, we're up against Endoland, and it's a scout. So we're getting quite a diverse... Um, Library of opponents? I don't know what word I was looking for there. Do we keep sharpshooter? Uh, I think fiery imp is enough here. How about two? Oh yeah, we get double value for crusaders assault with fiery imps. This actually might be pretty great. Third one! <laughs> Oh, that's just crazy. I'm putting them in the same lane because they can easily be killed by something here. They both get to live, so we don't have to use Crusader's Assault. That's two, and that's another two. Dodge the prophecies, that's good. My arrow shall fly through. Let's drop some more. So now unless there's a board wipe, Crusader's Assault will give us at least two cards with one Fiery Imp. So we get to refuel our hand. This is actually what have we here? a very great opener. So yeah, we get Breakthrough, Slay and Pilfer. Ah, how wrong you were. So here's the million dollar play. We're gonna draw three cards. Oh, how that feels good. That's our entire turn, but that feels pretty good. Fire! And we did refuel our hand. 
that's pretty nice. And now we have a rune break in either lane, so we can just play Aeolus Huntmate. Although, pressuring with the likes of Mighty Ally and a Stormcloak Vanguard could potentially be better. This one does draw me a card. Or North Wind and Stormcloak giving me more damage on board overall. I think this is the play. Let's go for another. Fire. Still no prophecies. The Nords must take back Skyrim. Okay. That's a graveyard out, so that's actually very good. One less way to get those pesky drain vitalities. My move in shadow. Shall uh, we put in a dishonest day's work? Okay, Brunyolf can put a kink in my plan. Wait, is this? No. Right? Right? It's not, right? No, it's not. We could, however, draw into a charge creature that we probably can't play. Huh. So this is the last chance to trigger Aeolus Huntmate's beast form. But playing two of these with the ring charge is just too good. Too good to pass up here. Fire. And so we shall. Let's divide it up like... Like this. Sharpshooter Scout. Okay, we whiffed, so that's going to be a card draw on top of the deck. It's a nice little thing here, having only the East March Crusaders as the full yellow cards in the deck. We always know if we whiff, we're gonna get a card draw. Or at least a 4-2 body. Back to 8. What can you do with that? Shear point kills 1. Word wall blocks damage. We do have the Crusader's Assault, though. Which we are using here, right? To just push some extra damage. And that is lethal in so many ways. In so many ways. Well played. That was a very aggressive starter for us, and it did work. It did work. Okay, we're back with the deck here, and it worked like I thought it would. It's an aggressive deck, and it's a budget build. But because the traditional mono red aggro also has, like, almost everything that's already here, it worked pretty well. Like, instead of Ailes Huntmates, it does run the Ulfric's Housecrawl. And it does run Rift Thanes, which would be replacing the Stormcloaks here, I guess. Or maybe the Castouts. So yeah. If you have these cards, but are new to the game and still making, trying to get your collection up, if you have Rift Thanes, for whatever reason, like, if you have Tear, that's a fine addition. You can put that in place of Aeolus Huntmate, I guess. If you have Ulfric's House Carl, put it in here. These are all good cards that you probably want to be playing here. So yeah. Uh, another thing about the deck, you did get to see the interaction of having only the East March Crusaders as the willpower cards. We whiffed a mighty ally, and we immediately knew that we were getting a card draw off the top. So that's an interesting piece of information to have in the deck. And you did get to see fiery imps on fire. <laughs> like, they were on fire there. But yeah. 
We have so many charged creatures that if we need to push that last bit of damage, if we just keep some buffs in the hand, we can finish the job. And yeah, I would actually almost recommend you put one more Crusader's Assault in here and take out like... maybe a cast out? Maybe a one drop? If you don't feel like you're getting enough value from Sharpshooter Scouts, you can take out a Sharpshooter Scout for another Crusader's Assault. But yeah, that's all for this week. If you like it, like the video, drop a comment down below, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and yeah, I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you on the next one.